It's funny as people come up and call me David, and I'm like, no, that's my brother. Yeah. <laughs> Frickin' frack show, here we, we are. are right? <laughs> my name's Steven, and I'm with Tobacco Cabana. And I'm David, I'm a Texan, and I love cigars. This is Pit Stop. <laughs> Welcome back guys to another pit stop here at Tobacco Cabana. This is our usual hangout. Love it here. Absolutely. Steve and Rhonda, David, no longer That's carry. No longer carry. But uh, he's in good hands. He is. Yeah. Oh, I'm seeing some of the, the posts he's doing. Yeah, he's doing, he's doing good. Yep. Uh, can't wait to see him up there. And Bob. In uh, Oklahoma City. And Bob, yeah, I can't forget about Bob. But uh, welcome back guys. Again, we're here for another pit stop. We've got a new format. I hope you're enjoying it. And but the one thing that has not changed, what has not changed, Stephen? Texas Toast. Gotta That's do the way it, we Texas. started. Yeah, it's the way we got to start it because we love you guys. Love your viewership. Love your input. Uh, any of the comments you've got to make, we appreciate each and every one of you guys. You've uh, built us up to what we are today, which is uh, just another cigar show, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? But, but we're having fun. Get but your we beverage. want to toast you guys. Yep. Get your coffee, your orange juice, whatever your beverage is of choice, and join us. Yes, because this is to good friends, good conversations, what we call Texas, Texas toast. toast. Yeah, cheers. Cheers, y'all. Boom, shakalaka. Yeah, it's good stuff. This mm. is easy top. I love balconies. I like a lot of balconies. Had to grab that one. Oh, yeah. I got a lot of dark fruit out of that. A lot of dark fruit out of that. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. It's, it's good. I like it. I like it. But we're here for the news, Dave. Uh, Dave. I'm Dave. You're not Dave, I'm right? Not Dave. How much? It, this is some good whiskey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get into some news. All right. We've got some great news from uh, Cappy. Absolutely. Love Dr. Cappy. Uh, Cappy Gabby, as we call him. Uh, he insists upon it. Uh, great cigars. Got uh, hooked up with his cigars some six, seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, he. He and I have talked for quite a while. He's got some great cigars. Had his cigars at my daughter's wedding. Uh, the one that hooked me on him was the Sumatra that mm -hmm. he had. That was my uh, favorite cigar that he has. And so he had some interesting news. This was back in February. Right. Uh, the Cafe 1901 Cigars is moving all production to the La Aurora factory. Huge. Mm, huge move. That huge is, move. I mean, that's one of the oldest factories. It says, Effective immediately, the Caffey Trading Company, LLC owners of Caffey 1901 Cigars, will be moving all premium cigar production to La Aurora uh, Cigars, located in Santiago, Dominican Republic. A strategic move which will allow for the growth of our company without compromising the quality and consistency that Caffey 1901 connoisseurs have become accustomed to, and I am definitely one of those oh. that have become accustomed to. Absolutely. And in Caffey's love for the Honduran people, mm -hmm grateful to the country and the people of Honduras for their support. Our company and brands would not be where they are today without the principal years in Honduras. Mm. The love I have for Honduras and its people will forever live on. Honduras is where our family roots are mm. and there will always be a place in my heart for Honduras. Yes, so. exactly. He said last year he announced a new blend for their portfolio, the Caffey 1901 Serie L Natural. This cigar is a very special blend I've been working on as it marks my seventh year in the business and celebrates my 50th birthday. After working for nearly two years to develop this blend, it only came to life with the help of Mr. Manuel Inoa of La Aurora F uh, Cigars, one of the finest blenders in our cigar industry today. Absolutely. Manuel's yeah. been around for a long time. Yes, for a long time. La Aurora has made it possible for us to tap into their vast tobacco reserves, wow. infrastructure, and knowledge in order for our company to continue to build the Caffey 1901 Cigars brand portfolio. I'm honored that the team has welcomed me with open arms. I've never felt more positive about the direction we're headed in. Yeah, A yeah. Wonderful. Story. Said we're also happy to report that all brands manufacturing premium cigars at Tabacalera G Caffey Isia. I don't know what I just said, will now be coming with us to La Aurora Cigars. So they're going to continue making 
all the cigar cigars that they carry on their site, yep. which was Cedar Creek, uh, Mensa. What was it, Mensa? There's Mensa. another one. It's got yeah, a king. Yeah. I, I want to. Well, did it say yeah, Mansa? Mansa. Mansa. The Chief. Yep. I've had that. I haven't had the Mansa yet. Uh, Cedar Creek. I've had that. Everyone is equally as important. Our goal is to always deliver the finest premium cigars and to build long-lasting quality relationships. And that man definitely knows family and friends and, and how to, he is one of the finest people in the cigar industry. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. He's done so much and glad to see them getting a chance to, to move and expand. Yeah, and I know that he's expressed to me about being having access to their tobacco now right. and their blending expertise, he said the blends that you like and love, like the Sumatra, he said it's just going to get even better. Mm -hmm. And so it's like I can't wait to see the next batch coming out. Oh yeah, and new developments. Yes, new new de Yes, yeah. that is true. That, yes, that's going to be what's nice. Cause yeah. We know La Aurora has been around for a long time. They've probably got Pilon sitting back there, huh. aged, that they are like, doesn't fit our profile. But mm -hmm. now we got Gabby Caffey here. In other news from uh, La Gloria Cubana. Yeah. Yeah, you're smoking. Yeah. Uh, La Gloria Cubana empowered its fans to develop the brand's latest limited edition release called La Gloria Cubana Society Cigar. The new expression is named after a special group of cigar smokers that interact with the brand regularly, both online and through the LGC website, and offline through La Gloria <laughs> activations across the USA. Yeah. I'm one of those people that got to uh, oh, partake in this nice. uh, blend. This happened a year ago for this cigar, this uh, society cigar, and it's coming out, they finally made it a year later from when the uh, the uh, testing blends were sent to us. We got three testing blends, and you rated them, nice. and sent in sent in your uh, tasting notes for each blend, and picked which one you liked. And so they were going to take the the number one pick that everybody that smoked them, and so that's what's being made. And Perfect. so I got to be a part of this. Yeah, it says uh, the La Gloria, La Gloria Cubana C uh, cigar. Uh, Society Cigar, I will get that right, was developed with input from more than 2,000 of the brand's most devoted fans from across the U.S. They consulted on the profile, packaging, and size of the cigar in a collaborative process that spanned nearly a year. Mm. It's been a pleasure to harness the, the uh, Society's passion for La Gloria and its honor to provide them with a cigar that reflects what the brand represents to them. Yeah, we look forward to collaborating with this group this great group of tenured smokers on future releases, said Steve Abbott, the director of marketing for La Gloria Cubana. Nice. Yeah, it was fun. Yep. I like doing stuff like that. So, handcrafted in the El Credito Cigar Factory, a standalone rolling gallery within General Cigar Dominica, the La Gloria Cigar Society Cigar is a Honduran Puro with filler tobacco from Jamastran and La Entrada with Jamastran binder and is crowned with a lustrous hmm. Olancho San Augustine wrapper. Wow. I need to learn to roll my R's better. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> medium to full body smoke is brimming with notes of earth, nuts, and coffee. Yeah, yeah. I'd have to look back at my notes uh, of the blend that we tasted and which one I liked. Mm. But yeah, it says the uh, cigars are available in one size, a box press Toro that's presented in a 20 count wooden boxes. A total of 2,500 boxes will be released in early August and is being distributed by Forged Cigar Company. That size is a six and a quarter by 54 and it's priced at about $8.99. Nice price point. Under nine bucks, right at nine bucks, however you want to look at it, under 10. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, how's it going? Back here in the man cave. Got a great cigar, Caffey 1901 San Geronimo, Connecticut in the Robusto size. Good Honduran cigar. This is not your normal Connecticut. If you haven't tried anything from Caffey, you need to. Try to finish off this bottle of TX, uh, barrel proof bourbon. Good stuff. And uh, making for a good combination. Let me leave you with this thought. Did you hear about the guy that froze to death at the uh, drive-in theater? Yeah, he went to go see Closed for the Winter. Stay smoky. This is a this is a, a a cigar that I 
I don't smoke a lot of these. I did before, but they got to be a little bit too full for me. Okay. You know, okay. it just, I, I used to like really, really full cigars, and I've kind of backed off to more of a, a, a nice Habano, nice medium to fullish type of smoke mm -hmm. instead of that full boom, punchy in the face. Uh, I just I've, I've backed off from that, and most of the diesels we're talking about diesel, diesel. now is uh, it always gave me that full in your face type smoke. Yeah. So um, it says diesel is releasing Disciple as a new full time offering available in all channels. The blend was previously released to the top U.S. brick and mortar retailers as a TAA exclusive. So you know only a few shops oh, yeah. get to carry those cigars, yeah. and we. Got some friends who are TAA, and it's uh, mm -hmm. it's not easy to get to that level mm -hmm. as a retailer. Yeah, Justin Andrews said that when we launched the Disciple in 2021 as a TAA exclusive, the smoke sold out very quickly. So yeah. we decided to make it a full-time addition to the diesel lineup. Disciple speaks to how strongly the brick and mortar community has embraced the diesel brand. It's a great example of just how much the cigar community values what we're doing, mm. diesel, from a blend and packaging perspective. Yeah. Handcrafted at the Tabacalera AJ Fernandez in Esteli, Nicaragua, mm. and developed in a collaboration between AJ and STG's Justin Andrews, Disciple is a robust and balanced cigar blended to stand out in a medium to full spectrum. So I, I might be able to try it. You know, it may come down a yeah. notch. Made with a Mexican San Andres wrapper, an Ecuadorian Sumatra binder, mm -hmm. and a filler exclusively comprised of Nicaraguan Habano from Esteli, the cigar is an example of blending expertise as an unexpected layer of sweetness creates intrigue against Disciples' bold and peppery notes. So that, you know, that does sound kind of interesting to me. Yeah. I like Sumatra, I like San Andres, and so it, it sounds to me like this one's down a notch with right. some sweetness in there like that. It, it sounds like something I, I, I probably want to try. But mm. here mm. you're going to love this. Comes in a Lancero. Oh. 7 by 38. So okay. they may have brought the flavor down, but the power of a Lancero means... But, but, but you're better gonna flavor, though. Oh, yeah. Better flavor. You're going you're gonna to bring it up. Uh, sell for an uh, SRP of $8.99 per cigar or $89.90 for a 10 count box. The cigar is now shipping to retailers and is being distributed through the Forge Cigar Company. And very we've cool. had a lot of good things coming from Forge. Yeah, very cool. All right, guys, that's the news. All right, Stephen. I need a tip. Another tip? Yeah. Is on the light. So we've spent time cutting it. We've taken our time to appreciate it. Let's light this. And the first thing we really want to do, cold draw. Cold draw before you light. Yeah. Yeah. That's Is, is the draw good? Mm -hmm. I mean, that immediately lets me know I'm not going to have to fight this cigar right. at any point. So now I want to toast that end and just start toast getting it. it. Just getting it warmed up. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to see the red come in. Right. Really starting to see it build. And now. Yep. Blowing on the end. And blowing on the it, It's a habit for it, me. It is. It just makes sure, like I can tell, I'm, I'm a little not lit on the bottom. So I can come back and give that just a, a touch up. Mm-hmm. And I'm good. Yeah, there you go. Great tip. They keep coming. Oh, they, they keep coming. coming. They keep coming. I mean, if you guys have got a tip that you want to give us that we you think will work into the show, send them in. Texas Cigar Road Show at gmail.com and uh, we'll work it in. Give you credit. Let I, you, you know. I would even say if you have a, a tip that you that we've already done that you have contention with, let's have a discussion about it. Let's understand. I mean, that's, yeah. that's how we Maybe grow. there's a different way you like to do it rather than the way we explain it. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So why are we here, Dave? You know, we've got another good pairing coming on. You yeah. know, we've got a Texas whiskey that yeah. you brought. I brought this one. So another one, just like last week, Yeah. last episode, we've got another one that I have not tried, but I'm familiar with yes, Tres Hombres. Yes. 
which pays homage to ZZ, ZZ, Top. ZZ Top. And yeah. come on, yeah. we're, we're, come the, on. we're the come beers. On. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that, that would be so cool to sit down with uh, ZZ Top, drink this, have a cigar, and, and just chill to some, and, some and, Z, and just be, listen to yeah, some ZZ Top. Yeah. We almost need ZZ Top going in the background, background right now. Yeah, that would be cool. But yeah, I've had my eye on this, and a lot of times when I go to the store, they're already sold out of it. And uh, my uh, wife wanted me to go to Total Wine and pick her up some some uh, drink that she liked, and I checked to see if they had it, and by golly, they did. So grabbed a bottle, and you can see I've already enjoyed it uh, um, with some other people. Um, they well, like let's it. Let's quit talking about quit it. Talking let's pour it. it. Exactly. Let's quit talking. Quit man. talking and more drinking. Let's yes. talk and <laughs> more drinking. <laughs> That's right. And we've got a, a so we've got a drink that you're not familiar with. You're, I think you'll like it. I really like it. Um, but when you told me about that, you, when you asked me about it, I said, "Hey, what, what, which, you know, which one of these two? And I said, "Well, let's bring this one on." Yeah. And I was like, "Okay, what cigar should we pair with this?" I wanted to go with, because we've always done a lot around uh, boutiques. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what, what we're doing right now is the Romeo 505. And yeah. this is a Nicaraguan Puro, and it's not a boutique. I mean, yeah. Romeo and Gi Julieta has been around since the 1800s. Yeah. Very deep, deep, deep history mm -hmm. in Romeo and Julieta. Right. This cigar, look yeah. at the age. Yeah, you've got some age on that that you brought in. I mean... These, when I picked That's, them up, when I picked up the box, I already had three or four years of age on this. Yeah, nice. And, and the reason why I wanted to do this one is to show, so, okay, so the cello here, as dark as it is right here, mm -hmm. that's the oils coming mm -hmm. out. That's and right. so you've got the oils that are just, and that's where we get our, just yeah. that burst of flavor. Yeah. It's already spreading out through the tobacco yeah. and all the way up into the wrapper. And it's just, you know, that you've got some goodness that's mm -hmm. about that you're about to enjoy. Yeah, that's a good looking cigar too. It's got a slight box press on there, and um, dark wrapper. Um, Nicaraguan. I love Nicaraguan tobacco. So. Um, and, and look, look at that. Look at that foot. I mean, that mm -hmm. foot is just. It's nicely. It's nicely uh, blended. Mm -hmm. It's nicely packed, rolled yeah. and packed. Yeah. You know, you're not seeing a lot of a lot of wormholes. You know. You're so, like you said, enough part. talking. Let's smoke this thing. There right? you go. We we had the drink. And you did you try that whiskey? Did you sip at it? Oh, uh, yeah. I always I always take a draw first. Take a draw for so you're taking a draw before you take a drink. I take a draw before I take a drink. Okay, so what if I'm what if I have a cigar that I already know about? So I can take a drink before I take a cigar. I, you can, and you can do it however you want to. There is no right or wrong way. What? There's no right or wrong there way. There is no right or wrong way. I always take a draw before I take a drink. Yeah, if you've got a routine, it's like, man, stepping up to the batter's box. Tap the plate on both sides, you know, tap you, your you heels, do, whatever. You do what it you, is you, that you need to do yeah. to get yourself into the yeah. role. And I always try to, myself personally, I always try to get at least an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch down before, before, I, before I take a drink. That way I know I have a good, solid understanding of the cigar yeah and and i know this cigar very well yeah. in fact this was in my top five cigars for 2021 oh wow i mean this is this is one of my favorites i will always go back to <laughs> this if i need if if i don't know what i'm going to go to this is a daily for me mm, okay it's just one of, i one have of my had favorites. this before i you know and, and i know i enjoyed it because you know the nicaraguan part of it and um it, it, I know I haven't had a whole lot of them. It's not a daily for mine, it, but it, it could be. My daily, of course, is, you know, if, if I'm going to go to anything, it's CO Brasilia. Mm -hmm. that's, Which is a that's, fan, fantastic yeah. cigar. Yeah. But, you know, and one of the other things, this is a Nicaraguan Puro. And not a lot of people know that it is a Nicaraguan Puro. And a lot, a lot of people know what a Puro means when it comes to cigars. Yeah. Yeah, they, I, I, yeah. I, I guess you know people throw that term around, uh, puro, puro, however you want to say it. Texan, it's a puro, puro, whatever. Yeah, you know, whatever your accent is. I think they they know what you mean. It's pure. It's pure. That one country. That, not just that one country. 
that one region in that country. Mm. And so when they classify it, and, and we know with Nicaragua, we've got Esteli, Condego, Alapa, Omotempe. Omotempe. When it's classified as a puro, it's a puro of that region. Hmm. So this is an Esteli. So everything, okay. every component of this, from wrapper to filler and binder, is all from Esteli. Okay. Yeah, it... Uh I just, uh, yeah, Romeo, you, I'm trying to read on this wrapper here, but, so what is the 505? Do you remember what that is? No, I don't. Yeah. And, and I, I've looked, and you know, not, a, Romeo and Julieta, however you pronounce it, Texas accent coming through there, they get a lot of bad rap on that. I've heard a lot of people. Yeah, because it's, uh, it's just mild cigars. It's mild cigars. This one's got a little bit more boldness to it. I've, I've smoked some that I'm like, you know, this was decent, but I'm just not going to go back to it. Mm -hmm. This is one that I always come back to because it fits my profile. It fits what it is, what I enjoy out of a cigar. A little bit more upfront um, boldness to it, um, and it's got to be with a you know that Nicaraguan that darker wrapper. It's a puro, then it's got to have a little bit more oomph to it than a regular Romeo y Julieta. Look Romeo e Julieta. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to go all text on this is Romeo and Julieta. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, that play. This is that William Shakespeare stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. Now it is a good cigar though, so you're going to take a swig of it now. Tell me what you think. Mm. Th this, this is nice. And this is a Balcones. Yeah, so, so this, this, this is, is nice. Texas it whiskey. And it doesn't have that that Texas whiskey Balcones funk that you get. Hmm. A, a lot of a lot of Balcones and a lot of Texas whiskey, and a lot of people don't like Texas whiskey because they call it that 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 Texas whiskey funk. You think it's the lime water? I think it is. Hmm. But this one, I'm not picking that up on it. And I've picked that up on not just on Balcones. I've picked it up on other ones. Striker. Uh, you pick it up on Stryker? No, I don't pick it up on Stryker okay. because Stryker is in an area, same as Milam and Green, where they get their water from a, limesto from a uh, limestone water. Aquifer. Don't yes. they? Don't they yes. get it from an aquifer? Yeah, okay. so it's not, it's not the standard Texas water that we get. You know, that, say, Devil's River and Rebecca's Creek and, um, you know, Lone Elm, which we've, you know, which we've talked about Lone Elm on. Okay. Um, Still Austin. Yeah, you know, where just picked up a bottle of that yesterday. So this is, so the Texas funk typically comes from the Texas blue corn that they use. Hmm, okay. Or the white corn, as opposed to the more sweeter yellow corn. Hmm, that, okay. that's That a lot of, you know, like your Kentucky bourbon, standard Kentucky bourbons are used. I'm not picking that up on here, which is, which is kind no, of No, nice. yeah, I really, it's got a slight little smokiness to it that I, I enjoyed. A, a little bit. And it's got a, a little bit of citrus on the nose, but a little bit of tropical fruit on the palate. Yeah, it's real. Yeah. Yeah, it's not got, quite banana, but almost like plantains. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought about that, but. But 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 try and see. You know, yeah. not not that influence has anything to do with it. Right. Right. <laughs> You're tasting this, <laughs> you know, <laughs> exactly. My, 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 my profile to your profile. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, don't, 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 don't think that it influenced them at all, right? I mean, the power of suggestion is, is, is just that. It is powerful. Which is exactly, okay. So here, here, here's my, here's my growing, we've talked about on another show, growing your palate. Okay. Here's my tip. Number one tip. Whatever you do, whether it's you're tasting a bourbon, you're tasting a wine, you're tasting a coffee, mm -hmm. a cigar, never, ever, ever read the tasting profile first. Right. Because as soon as you read that tasting profile, I can guarantee you, you're going to go, oh, yeah, you know, I really do pick up that three meat uh, bacon latticed meatloaf in there. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I can guarantee you that you'll never pick up a three meat bacon latticed meatloaf in any. Yeah. 
you'll pick up an element or something, a smokiness or something like that, that is reminding you of, of some food Bingo. that you yes. ate. Perfect. But um, you're not going to pick up a prepared food. You know, a, a couple of weeks I mean, ago, you know, I posted... Just, you're talking about yeah. tobacco that was growing in a dirt field. Unless it was growing next to a meatloaf factory. <laughs> you're not going to get... But a couple of weeks ago, I posted on my... Um, within the Leaf and Grain Society Facebook group, a challenge. You want to grow your palate? Okay, take 10 days and grow and smoke a different cigar every day for those next 10 days. Hmm. And isolate yourself, remove all distractions, get, grab yourself a journal. You're not going to write down anything specific other than what memories does it bring up? Hmm. What does it remind you of? What tastes that you're good? And if it comes up with that, I'm getting a, Oh, you know, I'm, it really, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting my grandmother's three-year-aged peach cobbler. Yeah. No, you're not, but it's reminding you For of For some something. reason or another. It reminds you of that, and that's how you grow your palate, because then you go, you know, I'm, I'm on the, my tasting wheel, mm -hmm. peaches, I, I see that. So I'm getting some fruits, so I'm getting some stone fruit, which peach is a stone fruit. I'm getting some peaches, or I'm getting some apricots. And you start training your profile that way hmm. based upon what it reminds you of. And this is a, an ongoing process. It's not an immediate process. It's an ongoing process. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, cool. Another uh, great pairing as far as a, a whiskey you haven't tried. A whiskey I haven't tried, a cigar I'm familiar with. Yeah, and I'm familiar with it. So we, we had another one where this was the same scenario for you and I. Both familiar with this cigar. Well, I've had this. It was fairly new for me, but I've been wanting it. You know, this is my first bottle, so it's not like um, I've had this several times. A lot of the bottles that you brought in, you've had before, and it's like, you're, you guys got to try this. Yeah. So, fairly new for me, but new for you. I love doing that because you're the one that's been bringing stuff in for us and, and showing us the new new uh, drinks, uh, bourbons, and uh rise and things like that that uh, that uh, I've gone out and bought myself. I go to the store and it's like, yep, that one's been on the show. I know that one's good. Got to get that one. Or I tell somebody else about it and I let them know about it. So another great show, Dave. I, I would I would like to say, uh oh, if any of your Bonus. viewers have anything that you want us to pair, yeah, you want us to try, mm. then email them Texas Cigar Roadshow at gmail.com. Did I get that? Yes, you did. Texas yes, you Cigar did. Roadshow at, at gmail.com. Leaf and Grain Society at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Post in the comments. Let us know. What? Give us a challenge and we'll step up to it. Mm. Yeah, sounds great. All right, so uh, let's take another tour. All right, guys, I know you. we normally have a shop stop at this point, but I thought it would be appropriate since we're here at the Smoke at the Creek Boutique Cigar Association, we would have a festival stop so that's what we're going to be showing you here at the smoke at the creek martinsville indiana the boutique cigar association the event kicked off friday night with the vip mix and mingle dinner and raffle the master of ceremonies was Texas's own Jarrah Hutchins. Um, but the Boutique Cigar Association is why we're here. Um, we're here to support the BCA, um, and they are vital in protecting um, the, the time-honored tradition of cigar smoking that we hold so dear. 2022 marks the second year for the Boutique Cigar Association's Smoke at the Creek. Uh, we've got over 40 companies represented. It's, it's incredible where, we are, where we're at today. We have 58 member companies, 40 companies are here presently. We've got a waiting list of 15 companies that would like to actually participate in this next year. The Boutique Cigar Association's mission is to support family-owned boutique cigar companies. And the Smoke at the Creek Festival does just that, as well as being a fabulous venue for brothers and sisters of the leaf to enjoy their fellowship with good food, drinks, and of course, cigars. Here are just a few of the 40 vendors that participated in the 2022 Smoke at the Creek. Listen, day number two, day number one was 
beyond our expectations. Uh, the community that we're building is amazing. Uh, people always ask, how many tickets did you sell? You know, this is like Fight Club. We don't talk about Fight Club. We don't talk about how many tickets we sold. I will tell you guys one thing. There wasn't one empty chair here yesterday. Sold out venue. The energy is fantastic. And uh, look, today's uh, vendor day. So we've got 40 exhibitors here. Uh, everybody's exhibiting their products. Um, it's a beautiful time to be in the cigar industry. It's like there's a renaissance. Uh, the energy is amazing. I, I keep saying that over and over, but we're truly blessed. Thanks for being here today. My name is Osvaldo Morales, and I founded this in 2019 because I wanted to make a cigar that was uh, satisfying, something that was going to be like a full meal. And um, I started off with Essential Blend number one, which is behind me, that one I made for my mom. Um, number two is a, a Corojo. And number three is a Havana. All right, Cloud Cigars is based out of Chesapeake, Virginia, in Hampton Roads. Uh, first, Cloud stands for Cigar Lovers Openly Uniting Together. Um, we started, we established in 2018. Rolled the first blend out in 2020, in July. We have two blends. Uh, if, you, if you're looking at it, you have our Cameroon, which is our mild to medium, and the Brazilian Maduro, which is our medium to full. So we have the cigar from the novice all the way to the aficionado that everybody can enjoy. Okay, we've got three major brands. The Vicarious, the original, uh, has, comes in four different blends, uh, ranging from mild to medium to medium full. Uh, then we have the uh, Invictus line, which is blended for us by Jose Blanco. And the, the, our latest one is the Negotiator. It's a small uh, box press cigar with a San Andres wrapper, real good for when you don't have a lot of time to smoke a big one. This ATL Black that you have right here and the ATL Magic are produced at Ace Prime in Esteli, Nicaragua, Tobacco Lear Pichardo. So uh, Ace Prime does the Mildias, Luciano the Dreamer, a lot of great sticks, crown head stuff as well. Um, the ATL Black is a Mexican San Andres wrapper with a really different combination of Fuerte and Suave. So it's, it's a strong Maduro, but it's smooth. There's no bitterness all the way through. And that's really a unique flavor profile for our, our Maduro. The ATL Magic also has a San Andreas wrapper, but a very, very different uh, kind of filler and binder combo. The filler and binder are heavily um, known by Pueblo Nuevo tobacco, which is a unique uh, kind of tobacco from, from the Condega region. And then the ATL Good Trouble is produced at a small factory called De La Vega, also in Esteli. Six regions of leaf, which, which as a mile plus medium level cigar, has a lot more complexity and flavor than most cigars of, of that strength. So that's what we're here to do, and uh, we're just excited to be part of the Boutique Cigar Association. One of the ones I was crazy about, they've actually got the baller. There it is, and uh, very cool product. If you guys are, you know, talking about how different ways you want to cut your cigars. You got all your traditional ones, but look at this thing. This is something that is going to scoop out. It's going to scoop out the cut. So, uh, I mean, it's very cool action. So you guys actually developed this, right? We did. We make it in-house, made in the USA. Um, this is how it works. We call it the baller. It's kind of sort of like uh, melon baller. Right. It doesn't mess with the integrity of the layers of the cap. This is the result. It's really simple. You just cut. This is obviously already cut, but this is the result. It's a upgraded punch. And then you guys have an actual new uh, humidimeter coming out. So we have a new meter coming out. It's metal. Retractable prongs. The prongs are going to be. If you could do a comparison, a little right. bit closer. Okay. So I can do a Lancero now. Well, you could almost do a Lancero with some of these. You got to be a little careful, right. but this is going to be much easier to do a Lancero. Um, nice little pocket clip, all metal, rechargeable batteries, USB port. You guys have stepped it up. What is Apostate Cigars? Apostate Cigars, so my name is Brandon. I'm the co-founder and director of sales. We're based out of Salt Lake City, Utah. A couple of Mormon boys who opened a retail shop in Salt Lake and then uh, decided to dabble with manufacturing. So we work with uh, Hochi Blanco down in Tabaclera Palma, the Dominican Republic. 
He's given us access to a lot of really good tobacco and we've come up with some pretty amazing blends. We're here at uh, Smoke at the Creek in Indiana showcasing two of those blends. Looking to uh, just get them into the public's hands, create some awareness. Yeah, good looking. I had this one last night. What do you think? I loved it. Good yeah. cigar. Very, yeah. very, very good cigar. All of our tobacco is five years aged before it's rolled, so everything's smooth, ready to go. So we're pretty happy with the product and we just want to get it into people's hands. Yeah, All man. right. Yes, sir. We got Brother Smoking Stokies. We have four different faces that actually focus on brotherhood itself. And we also have a new brand called BTC. Better than Cuban. So we're putting that out there. <laughs> all right, all right. And each one of our cigars represents the qualities of brotherhood and togetherness. GTO is, uh, it's, uh, it's my, it's, I'm the fourth generation owner. We actually, uh, what makes us unique is that we grow our own tobacco. We roll our own, we do our own blends. I'm the master blender for our company. My grandfather was the master blender in Cuba. Uh, we actually started in Dominican 147 years ago, and then we moved to Cuba 100 years ago. So, and then we came back in 1952. So, uh, my grandfather was a was a very notable uh, blender. He has I have a couple of his blends over here. The Corona 10 year on my grandfather's. My dad was uh, did a couple of cigars. This was the Don Emilio is his legacy cigar. It's a limited edition. Um, we age all of our tobacco. And the nice thing about my cigars is that they all are under about, they're all under $12. Uh, you get a premium cigar because we only select the best tobaccos and then we sell the rest. Uh, we have a 400 acre farm. Uh, my cigars are all Dominican puros, which is excellent. If you can find a puro for under 11 or $10, I, uh, I'll, I'll buy it for you. I'm super excited. I'm wearing two hats today. One is as co-owner of DAV Cigars, uh, our own factory out of the Dominican Republic, all long filler premium cigars, and we have a lot of our, uh, our blends on display here today. My second hat I'm wearing is as the chairman of the BCAA. We are so excited and delighted not only to have you here, sir, but the fact that our second annual festival has doubled in size as far as vendors and attendees. So we are truly blessed. This is an amazing thing. But more importantly is the camaraderie amongst everybody. It's, it doesn't feel like we're here to work. We're here to have fun, enjoy each other's cigars. And certainly you're welcome to ours. This was only a small taste of what the Boutique Cigar Association and Smoke at the Creek had to offer hundreds of brothers and sisters of the leaf for this weekend. It was great to experience a cigar event at a gorgeous venue that was centered around the boutique cigar companies. My hat goes off to everyone involved in organizing such a phenomenal event. I can only imagine what next year holds. All right, man. Another great show, Stephen. Absolutely. Great cigar pairings. Yeah, cigar pairings, always love, and, and being able to surprise Dave. Oh, absolutely. You know, had a great cigar pairing with a cigar that I know, and uh, got to give him uh, some um, whiskey that he's never had. Yeah. Uh, but I hope you guys are enjoying all the news that we've got. Uh, trying to mix things up, give you a little bit of here uh, news and, and uh, information, information, word, knowledge, knowledge everything. We want to we want to be able to see what we can get you guys. If you guys have any suggestions as to what you could see our show doing, you know, send it to uh, Texas Cigar Roadshow at gmail.com. And until next time, like we always like to say, enjoy the leaf, grow the culture. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Texas Cigar Roadshow is presented by Lone Star Cigar Association.